Lucas Jones had the privilege of studying at some of the best schools in Seattle, thanks to the tireless efforts of his mother, Helena Jones. Helena, a dedicated teacher and single mother, worked hard to ensure that Lucas received a quality education. She taught at two different schools and, in her free time, offered private tutoring to supplement her income. I do this for you, my son. I want you to have all the opportunities I didn't have, Helena would say while grading tests late at night. Helena secured scholarships for Lucas at private schools, where he excelled from day one. Lucas was always the pride of his mother. You are my little genius, she would often say, smiling proudly as he showed her his flawless grades and school projects. From an early age, Lucas displayed an insatiable curiosity about the world around him. He spent hours reading encyclopedias and watching documentaries about space, nature, and science. At school, Lucas participated in various extracurricular activities. He was an active member of the science club, where he led experiments and presented innovative projects. Let's test the theory of relativity with this experiment, he would say to his peers who looked at him with admiration. He also took part in math fairs, frequently winning awards. Congratulations, Lucas. You did an incredible job, the school principal would say, handing him another medal. Helena always encouraged Lucas to follow his interests. Never stop exploring, Lucas. Knowledge is the key to a bright future, she would say, taking him to museums and planetariums on the weekends. Lucas absorbed every experience with enthusiasm, always asking questions and seeking to understand more deeply what he saw. Helena's dedication and Lucas's natural curiosity formed a powerful combination. He not only excelled academically, but also developed leadership skills and a profound love for learning. One day you will reach the stars, my son, Helena would say, hugging him affectionately. And Lucas believed it, determined to turn his mother's sacrifices into a bright future. With all of Helena's efforts, Lucas continued to excel, and as time passed in high school, Lucas met Susan Miller during a chemistry class. From their first experiment together, it was clear they had a special connection. Did you know that the reaction between these compounds can create an explosion if not controlled? Lucas remarked, his eyes sparkling. Yes, and that's why we need to be extremely careful, Susan replied, smiling. From that moment, the two became inseparable. They helped each other with school activities, spending hours in the library studying for exams and working on projects. Lucas, can you explain this physics equation to me? I'm having trouble, Susan would ask. Of course, Susan, let's figure it out together, Lucas would respond, always eager to help. Susan was a brilliant and determined student, and together they formed an unbeatable team. We're like a team of academic superheroes, Lucas joked, eliciting laughs from Susan. Over time, their friendship evolved into a relationship. They shared not just studies, but also dreams and plans for the future. One day, I'll be a renowned doctor and you, a famous astronomer, will change the world, Susan would say, her eyes shining with enthusiasm. Yes, and we'll explore the stars together, Lucas agreed, holding her hand. Both families supported the relationship. Susan is a wonderful girl, Lucas. I'm happy for you, Helena Lucas's mother would say. And Lucas is an incredible young man, Susan. He's very good for you, Susan's mother would comment. They spent weekends together, studying and dreaming about the future. However, at the end of high school, they decided to separate to focus on their studies. I'm moving to New York to study medicine, Susan said, tears in her eyes. And I'll pursue my passion for astronomy at the University of Washington, Lucas replied, trying to hide his sadness. The farewell was painful, but both knew it was the best for their careers. We'll meet again no matter where the stars take us, Lucas promised. Yes, our love is strong enough to survive any distance, Susan agreed, embracing him one last time before leaving. Lucas enrolled in college, choosing to study astronomy at the University of Washington. He was excited about the possibilities the future held. Finally, I will be able to study the stars and the mysteries of the universe, said Lucas with a radiant smile as he said goodbye to his mother, Helena, on the first day of class. Helena, proud, replied, I am so happy for you, my son. I know you will shine. In the first few months, Lucas excelled in his classes, actively participating in study groups and research projects. Professor, 
Have you considered the hypothesis of dark matter influencing galaxy formation? Lucas would ask, always curious and engaged. He spent nights at the university observatory, fascinated by the starry sky. Every star has a story, and I want to discover all of them, he told his peers. However, his life changed drastically when his mother was diagnosed with aggressive cancer. Lucas, I need to tell you something, said Helena, her voice trembling. The doctors found a tumor and it's very aggressive. Lucas felt the ground disappear beneath his feet. No, this can't be happening, he murmured, holding his mother's hands. Over the next three months, Lucas dedicated all his time to caring for Helena. He accompanied her to every chemotherapy session and spent sleepless nights by her hospital bed. Mom, I'm here with you. We'll get through this together, he said, trying to maintain hope. But the disease progressed quickly and Helena died in his arms. I love you, Lucas. Be strong, were her last words. Devastated, Lucas lost his will to live. He dropped out of college, unable to focus on his studies. What's the purpose of all this without my mother? he thought, sinking into sadness. However, he had to start working to try to support himself, but he began drinking to try to alleviate the pain, which only worsened his situation. I need something to forget, he would tell himself as he emptied another bottle. The drinking led to the loss of his job at an electronics store. Lucas, you are missing too much and your performance has dropped. We have no choice but to fire you, said his boss. The spiral of depression and self-destruction seemed endless, and Lucas distanced himself from all his friends and family. I don't want anyone to see me like this, he thought, isolating himself more and more. As the years passed, Lucas failed to recover. He went through several temporary jobs, but drinking and depression overtook him. I need a job, anything, he would say with a trembling voice in job interviews. However, his emotional instability and alcohol addiction made it difficult to maintain any position. Sorry, Lucas, but we can't continue with you. He heard from more than one employer. Eventually, he was evicted from his home for failing to pay the rent. Lucas, you have until the end of the month to vacate the apartment, the landlord said with a look of pity. I... I'll get the money, Lucas promised, but he knew it was an empty promise. On the last day, he packed his few possessions in a backpack and left, unsure where to go. Life on the streets was harsh and relentless. Lucas struggled daily to survive. Hey, got any change? He would ask strangers, receiving looks of indifference or contempt. Nights were especially cruel, with biting cold and the constant threat of violence. I need to find a safe place to sleep, he thought as he looked for a sheltered corner. He felt invisible and hopeless. No one cares about me, he murmured to himself as he watched people rush by, barely noticing his presence. Hunger and thirst were constant companions, and he relied on sporadic donations for food. Here, take this, a woman said, handing him a sandwich. Thank you, Lucas responded, a lump in his throat. But there was still a small flame of determination within him, preventing him from giving up completely. I can't continue like this, he thought remembering the dreams he had as a young man. I need to find a way out of this situation. He began to frequent shelters and support centers, seeking help to overcome his addiction and find a way back to dignity. You can do it, Lucas. One step at a time, he told himself, trying to keep hope alive. Meanwhile, Susan took a different path. Determined and focused, she enrolled in the medical school at New York University. From the first day, Susan stood out for her dedication and passion for the field. I want to make a difference in people's lives, she said, her eyes shining with enthusiasm. It was during an anatomy class that Susan met Ryan. Hi, you're new here, aren't you? He asked with a friendly smile. Yes, I'm Susan. Nice to meet you, she replied, shaking his hand. Ryan was charismatic and intelligent, and they quickly became inseparable friends studying together and sharing dreams of a promising future in medicine. Over time, their friendship evolved into a romance. Susan, you're amazing. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, Ryan confessed on a starry night on campus. I feel the same, Ryan, she responded, moved. After graduating, they decided to open a clinic together. Let's create a place where we can really help people, Ryan said as they planned every detail. 
The clinic was a success from the start. Dr. Susan, thank you for everything. You saved my life, a patient said, holding her hand with gratitude. Susan and Ryan earned a great deal of money and recognition in the medical community. We're making a difference, Ryan. I'm so happy, Susan said, embracing him. Despite all the achievements and successes, Susan never forgot Lucas, her first love and great friend. Whatever happened to him? She wondered, looking at an old photo of the two from high school. I hope he's doing well, she murmured with a sigh. She wondered if she would ever meet him again and if he had managed to overcome the challenges he faced. Susan and Ryan were happy and planned to marry. Shall we start planning our wedding, love? Ryan suggested with a smile. Yes, I can't wait, Susan replied. But a part of her heart still worried about Lucas, wishing that he had found his way. One day, after a pleasant dinner in a stylish restaurant, Susan and Ryan left holding hands, laughing and talking about plans for the wedding. The food was amazing, wasn't it? Ryan commented, smiling. Yes, it was a perfect evening, Susan replied, her eyes sparkling. As Ryan finished paying the bill, Susan stepped outside first and looking around, her eyes locked onto a man sitting on the sidewalk, wearing dirty clothes and with a lost look. Her heart skipped a beat. Lucas? she murmured, incredulous. Approaching slowly, she called out, Lucas, is that you? Lucas lifted his head, his tired eyes meeting Susan's. Susan, he responded, his voice hoarse and filled with surprise. Before he could say more, Susan hugged him tightly, ignoring his deplorable state. I can't believe it's you. It's been so long, she exclaimed, tears in her eyes. Ryan came out of the restaurant and saw the scene his face twisted with jealousy and suspicion. Susan, what's going on? Who is this man? He asked, approaching quickly. Ryan, this is Lucas, my childhood friend, Susan explained, not letting go of Lucas. He's going through a tough time, Ryan frowned and tried to pull Lucas away. Susan, you can't just hug a stranger on the street. He could be dangerous, he said, tugging her arm lightly. Ryan, please trust me. I've known Lucas for years, Susan insisted firmness in her voice. Lucas, embarrassed, took a step back. Sorry, Susan, I didn't mean to cause trouble, he said, looking at the ground. But at the same time, he felt a glimmer of hope seeing Susan again. No, Lucas, you're not causing trouble. I want to know what happened to you, she replied with a look of determination. Ryan sighed, still suspicious, but reluctantly stepped back. All right, but let's talk somewhere safer, he suggested, trying to remain calm. Susan nodded and, holding Lucas's hand, said, Come on, Lucas, let's find a place where we can talk peacefully. During the conversation, Lucas and Susan sat in a nearby cafe away from the noise of the streets. Ryan, still suspicious, watched closely. Lucas, what happened to you after high school? Susan asked, her eyes filled with concern. Lucas sighed deeply, looking at his trembling hands. After my mom died, everything fell apart he began, his voice laden with sadness. She was everything to me. When cancer took her, I lost my way. I dropped out of college, started drinking, and lost my job. I ended up on the streets with no one to support me. Susan held Lucas's hand, her eyes brimming with tears. Lucas, I'm so sorry. I had no idea you were going through all this, she said, her voice choked up. You were always so strong and determined. Ryan, impatient, interrupted. Susan, we can't solve all the world's problems. We need to be realistic, he said, trying to stay calm. Susan looked firmly at Ryan. Lucas isn't one of the world's problems, Ryan. He's my friend and I'm not going to abandon him, she stated determinedly. Lucas, I want to help you. Why don't you come work at our clinic? We need someone reliable and talented like you. Lucas was surprised and moved. Susan, I... I don't know what to say. Would you really do that for me? He asked, his eyes shining with hope. Of course, Lucas, you deserve a second chance, Susan replied, smiling. I believe in you. Ryan scoffed, clearly displeased. Susan, this is crazy. He has no experience in the medical field, he argued. Ryan, Lucas is smart and dedicated. He can learn. Everyone deserves a chance to start over, Susan insisted without breaking eye contact. Lucas, tears in his eyes squeezed Susan's hand. Thank you, Susan. I promise I won't let you down. I'll give it my all, he said gratefully. Susan smiled and nodded. 
I know you will, Lucas. Let's start a new journey together, she declared, while Ryan, still reluctant, watched the scene, realizing he could not change Susan's decision. Lucas embraced the new opportunity life had given him and began working at Susan's clinic with enthusiasm and gratitude. He dedicated himself to every task, from cleaning to organizing files, determined to prove his worth. Susan often praised his work, which further motivated him. However, Ryan was increasingly uncomfortable with Lucas's presence, as he knew Lucas could disrupt his plans. Ryan used Susan's clinic to launder money, and Lucas was too smart not to notice this. Ryan decided he needed to get rid of him once and for all. However, while Ryan was devising a plan to frame Lucas, Lucas noticed that Ryan and Carla, the clinic's secretary, were romantically involved and furthermore, were using the clinic for their illicit activities. Yet Lucas did not know how to tell this to Susan. And Ryan continued with his plan to frame Lucas, placing an envelope full of illicit money in his locker. This will finish him off once and for all thought Ryan with a malicious smile. The next day, Ryan called Susan and Lucas into a meeting in the office. Susan, we need to discuss something very serious, Ryan started with a grave tone. I've discovered a significant amount of money is missing, and I have reason to believe Lucas is involved. Lucas was shocked. What? That's absurd. I would never do that, he exclaimed indignantly. Let's check Lucas's locker. Ryan suggested with a look of false concern. If he has nothing to hide, there won't be any problem. Susan, visibly upset, agreed. All right, let's check, she said, trying to remain calm. They went to Lucas's locker and Ryan opened the door, revealing the envelope full of money. Here's the proof, Ryan declared triumphantly. Lucas, how do you explain this? Lucas was dumbfounded. I don't know how that got there. Ryan must have put it there to frame me he said, desperate. Susan looked at Lucas, her eyes filled with disappointment. Lucas, this is very serious. I trusted you, she said, her voice breaking. Please, Susan, you have to believe me. Ryan is using the clinic to launder money. I saw him and Carla exchanging money and caresses, Lucas pleaded desperately, trying to prove his innocence. Ryan shook his head, feigning indignation. That's ridiculous, Lucas. You're trying to divert attention from your own crimes he said accusatorily. Susan took a deep breath, fighting back tears. Lucas, I can't ignore what I saw. You need to leave, she said sadly. Lucas felt betrayed and helpless. Susan, I swear I'm telling the truth. Please don't fire me, he pleaded. But Susan turned away, unable to look at him. Leave, Lucas, she repeated firmly. Lucas left the clinic, feeling devastated but determined to prove his innocence and protect Susan. I won't give up he thought resolutely. I'll find a way to expose Ryan and save Susan from this trap. Determined to prove his innocence, Lucas spent days discreetly investigating. He sifted through documents, observed suspicious behavior, and finally managed to gather a folder full of compelling evidence against Ryan. This will end him, Lucas thought, holding the folder with trembling hands. That night, Lucas decided it was time to confront Ryan. He entered the clinic after hours and went straight to Ryan's office. We need to talk, Lucas said firmly. Ryan looked at him with disdain. What do you want, Lucas? Came to beg for your job back? He scoffed. No, Ryan. I came to put an end to your lies, Lucas replied, throwing the folder on the table. Here are all the proofs of your money laundering schemes. Ryan turned pale but tried to maintain his composure. This is ridiculous. You think these proofs will save you? He said, trying to sound confident. Meanwhile, Susan, who had discreetly followed Lucas since he entered the clinic, was hiding behind the door, listening to every word. Her heart raced as she processed the revelations. I know you're involved with Carla and that you use the clinic as a front for your dirty business, Lucas continued. And now, Susan knows too. At that moment, Susan entered the room, her face serious. Is it true, Ryan? Did you really do this? She asked, her voice trembling. Ryan tried to approach Susan, but she stepped back. Susan, you can't believe this traitor. He's making all this up, he said desperately. I heard everything, Ryan, and now I'm calling the police, Susan said, picking up the phone. Ryan tried to flee, but Lucas stopped him. You're not going anywhere, he said, grabbing Ryan by the arm. Minutes later, the police arrived and arrested Ryan. 
You are under arrest for money laundering and fraud, the officer said, handcuffing Ryan. As Ryan was taken away, Susan looked at Lucas with gratitude and sadness. I'm sorry for not believing in you earlier, she said, tears in her eyes. It's okay, Susan. What matters is that the truth came out, Lucas replied with a comforting smile. With Ryan out of the picture, Lucas returned to work in the clinic alongside Susan. Gradually, the love between them rekindled. They realized that despite all the adversities, they still had each other and were ready to face the future together. Let's rebuild this, together, Susan said, holding Lucas's hand. Yes, together, Lucas replied, finally feeling at peace. Lucas had proven his innocence and managed to rise again. He felt alive once more. He found reasons to continue fighting. Want access to more stories like this? Click the link in the pinned comment below and find out how. Thank you for traveling with us in this tale. Subscribe for more stories and hit the bell to not miss anything. A hug and see you next time.